show you how I turn these two pieces of scrap wood into an awesome piece of wall art. After picking out the wood I was going to use, I needed to come up with a way to cut some radiuses. I ended up using some screws with a bender board to create matching curves on both sides of the board, and then I cut it out with a jigsaw. And I think my jigsaw skills are improving because it turned out really good. If you want to build some tiki wall art for yourself, I'll have a list of the materials I used on my blog, and I'll leave a link in the description box below. The next step in my tiki wall art was to lay out my design, and while this is my first go at it, let's just hope I can carve better than I can draw. Once I got a little more comfortable with my design, I laid out a rough sketch on my actual board focusing on the center line and the proportions of each section so that I don't get too carried away while I'm carving. I also did some practice on a separate board to see which carving burrs I liked using. And then I just went for it. I'm still new to this power carving and not an expert by any means, but it's really fun and the possibilities are endless with what you can create. So if I can do this, you can do it too. I ended up only using three carving burrs for the entire piece. Two that I've used before and one new one. I started with a saber tooth half inch circle burr in coarse grit to cut all my initial layout lines and to really remove the material faster in the sections that were needing to be shallower. Since the burr has a quarter inch shank, I used my Makita die grinder with it. Then next I switched to a smaller saber tooth circle burr and this allowed me to go deeper without making the lines wider. Then lastly, I used a flame burr to finesse around and round over the edges to create more of a taper between the shallower and deeper sections. With the eight inch shank bits, I used my Ryobi rotary tool for the first time. And I don't think it came out half bad. And with the carving done, it was time for finish. And since this piece was gonna be outside, I thought it would be an awesome time to combine fire and power carving, or shoshugi ban. And what I found out was these two go together really well. Plus I wire brushed the wood after burning it and repeated burning it back and forth and brushing it several times gave a really cool raised grain effect by removing the softer wood. Oh, and plus it was fun to watch the sparks fly. Now to finishing the backer panel. I went with my old faithful color, orange. I think the bright color is really gonna make this carving pop. While that was drying, I decided I wanted to add a little more texture to the piece in a couple of different places. First to the hairline and then to the neckline to kind of give it a look like it was wearing a lay or something. Then I touched up those spots with a little more fire, added a coat of outdoor oil for protection, painted the back side of the backer and attached the two pieces together using a few screws. I am stoked on how this piece turned out. It had been a while since I got to use a pop of color and it was fun trying something new by mixing the carving and fire. So are you ready to try a tiki wall art project of your own? If you thought this video and build was awesome, please comment below and hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Thanks for watching. Now go out and build loud, build wild. Oh, and have an awesome day.